I'm a guy who's into future-proofing old laptops. The laptop right here is from 2006. It's a Lenovo ThinkPad R60, and it's a wonderful little machine, and I love it. And I wanted to give it Bluetooth, and this is because um, now the headphone jack is pretty much, well, it's very nil in consumer use, and really wired headphones and stuff, they'll, they're on their way out if they're not already out. So if you want to connect your AirPods to your computer or your Bose headphones, you need a you need a Bluetooth card, which isn't present in old systems like these. So this is actually a PCMCIA, yeah, that's right, a card bus, USB and Bluetooth expander. You've probably seen like Wi-Fi cards that you can just put in like old computers and stuff. Yeah, this is a, this is similar to that, except instead of like being like a Wi-Fi card or like a serial port card or something like that, it's actually um for Bluetooth. And I tried looking up their model number and such. All I could really find were just some eBay listings, which is actually where I bought this from. And I've been using it for a few months. It's been serving me wonderfully. And it came with um, a driver's CD, which I'll be showing next. It's a pretty wonderful little thing. So in the back here, we can just see... Let me try to focus my camera. Uh, yeah, my camera isn't focusing, but... Yeah, here we can just see some of the um, other information. Not really much of a model number, unfortunately. I think it's just something random and generic, but it does the job, so it's fine for me. With regards to the USB port, yeah, it's fine. But the problem with it is that if you insert like low-power devices like these... It works just fine but for something like an external hard drive or a, like a USB DVD player you're better off using the built-in USB port if you have any this is because um, this actually came with this power cable and that's because it can't get enough power from the PCMCIA slot such that it can power something as robust and like, you know, actually spin the mechanical motor of like a hard drive or a, or a DVD drive. So that's why if you want to use, if you really want to use that for that kind of purpose, you need to plug in that cable. But that's honestly really stupid because if you're going to plug in this cable and this literally has a USB port on it. So if you're going to plug in this cable, um, first of all, it's super short. So you'd literally have to get like a, like one of those bricks like that we use for phones and stuff and just like plug it into a wall but this is only like what a foot and a half long so it's really stupid and uh, secondly if you plug this in to a usb port that's oh that's on here I, look, I know it's pretty dark but that's a usb port right there that that defeats the entire purpose like if you're going to use one usb port just to access another, why don't you just use that USB port to begin with? It doesn't make a lot of sense. But it does work for low power devices, I'll grant it that. It also has this antenna, which I haven't seen done. It doesn't do too much, but from far distances, like if you're trying to connect to like a speaker that's pretty far away, it is pretty cool. So yeah, that's um, another one of the features. Uh, just give me a moment while I try to show this. Alright, so, yeah, here we have it. And, yeah, that's the antenna, and you can just, like, bend it and, like, keep it like that. So, I'm just gonna insert it in my computer now. It goes in this slot, and I can just push it in. Oh, I think I'm putting it in the express card slot. Yeah, so the ThinkPad R60 actually accepts both express card and PCMCIA. This is PCMCIA. So if your computer only accepts express card connections, please only use that. So yeah, now it's locked in. That's good. So here I have the computer booted up. And it's actually running Vista because this is um, from 2006, but it actually, um, 
if you look here, I'm, I really like multi-booting, so I actually partitioned the drive for three operating systems that it supports. So it supports Windows 2000, so um, I have that too. I have Windows 2000, XP, and Vista, and they all work the exact same, but I'm just going to use Vista because um, I, I don't really care. It just That's the default operating system. So it's just normal, like how do you do it on like any other computer? You go to the tray, you open the Bluetooth icon, and here, um, those are my Galaxy Buds, which I actually previously paired. I'm not sure why it has the NAV logo by it. I, I don't really know. However, I'm gonna pair it with um, my JBL speakers, which are right over here. So I'm gonna pair it with those. So first, I'm just gonna turn that on, put it into pairing mode, so now it's in pairing mode. And now, I'm just gonna add a device. I'm gonna add a audio video device. So now it's on Beat Hotel, because that's the name of the Bluetooth device. So, yeah, it's really just like the normal experience. I'm not sure why it has this icon. This shouldn't really happen to you, because I have like a ThinkPad, and I also have the ThinkPad drivers installed, so that's why I'm getting this icon. Um, so now, as you can see, I have OnBeat Hotel. Oh, and it's gone now. I'm not really sure what that was. So now I have OnBeat Hotel and Galaxy Buds. So when I click on that, um, I get these different, different options. So I'm just going to go with Sync, because that has, like a, has a headphone thing, and I want to play music. So I click that and it said stereo audio disconnected su successfully. So it probably already was connected and I just disconnected it. So in order to connect it, I'm just gonna, I just double clicked it again and now it said stereo connection established. So now just to test that the audio is working, I'm just gonna go here and I'm just gonna play this a little bit. So I don't hear it from here, so I'm gonna increase, uh, volume from here or I'm gonna oh yeah I'm not sure if you heard that but I can hear it from the speaker um let me increase the speaker volume well actually it'd be better if I played a song so let me just play a song um so let's just go to music sample music let's just let's just play some Beethoven who hates Beethoven If it'll load. And it's coming from there. And it, the audio is actually really good. And yeah, it's just, it's really good. I'm gonna turn down the volume a little bit. So yeah. That's really the Bluetooth experience on this thing. Really standard, and it's pretty amazing, honestly, seeing an old computer like this being able to harness such new technology. So with that out of the way, let's talk about um, the other major issue. So the software that I'm using on this um, is uh, CSR Harmony, and that's what actually came on this dryer disk. So if I um, actually insert it here, we can kind of see this setup process. I did upload my, the contents of this disc on archive.org. Um, I can put a link it, link to that in the description, but um, I don't really think anyone will need that since if you buy it, it's gonna come with the driver disc. So I just inserted it, now it's just loading. Let's just wait for it. And here it is. So um, let's run setup.exe. I'm not actually gonna reinstall anything. I just wanna show you how the setup will kind of look. Um, now, the reason why I say that um, there's a problem with this is that so the CSR Harmony Bluetooth software works fine with every version of Windows that's, uh, that's either Windows XP or older. And the reason why I have a problem with that is because PCMCIA isn't only limited to XP. Like, you might want to use PCMCIA with um, Windows 2000 or uh, Windows 95. And... Well, not maybe 95. I don't think that, I think that's like way, you're asking for too much for 95. But um, maybe like something like Windows 98, which um, you can actually do that. 
And the way you do that is instead of using the CSR Harmony Bluetooth driver, you have to use something else called Blue Solo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but um, what that basically is, is it's a universal Bluetooth stack, which is basically aimed at older systems and it's supposed to allow you to um it's supposed to allow you to use those older systems to if you don't have the official driver then you could still connect and use your bluetooth device so um since i wasn't able to use the official driver on windows 2000 i'm going to quickly boot into windows 2000 and kind of showcase blue solio so right now i'm booting into windows 2000 um I do have a DVD inserted because I wanted to test something else while I was filming this. So there might be a pop-up, just ignore that. Um, once this is done booting, well, I'll kind of showcase how I connect to Bluetooth. It's really the same process, it's just with a different app. Um, I actually, in order to use the app, you will need an internet connection. So in order to um, do that, you might have to hook up like maybe an old system to the internet or something and um, that might be an inconvenience to those with older systems that are internet free but yeah if you want to use the software that i'm about to show you for any system that's older than xp then you will need you will need internet um you don't need it all the time for example if i disable like if i disable internet right now bluetooth is still gonna work but the thing is Blue Solil actually costs money. Now, people have come up with um, ways for old versions, such that um, old versions of Blue Solil, um, you don't have to pay for them. And those older and like newer versions of Blue Solil don't even work on like Windows, on like Windows 2000 and Windows 98 and stuff. So I'm gonna link. Um, so some person he made a really nice YouTube tutorial where he basically showed how to install a specific version of Blue Solio and um, register it so that you can use it forever without any fears of, um, you know, it getting deactivated because it's like the free trial expired or whatever. So you will need an internet connection to activate it, but once it's activated, you should be good to go. So yeah, that's an inconvenience. Um, some people might only be able to, con to connect their older systems to the internet via modem and um who who on this planet uses modem right so i mean if that's the case um i apologize i mean i can't really do anything but you may have to just reinstall blue solio like every couple of weeks or something i'm not really sure so if we look at the taskbar we can see the different icons and the blue, and we can also see our Bluetooth icon. I know my camera is really bad at focusing, but that very last icon, that's a Bluetooth icon. So I'm just gonna click on it. All right, and now here we have um, my Bluetooth devices. So I guess I already paired this with my speaker. So you can always, you know, just do the same search devices thing. It's really the exact same process. I really don't need to demonstrate this. Just put your, um just put your whatever device it is just put it in pairing mode and it'll find it and now i'm gonna go to on the hotel i'm gonna go to this one because it's audio and i want to play audio so now it's gonna try to establish a connection and it says operation is not successful so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna disconnect this is probably what any person would do i'm just gonna like unpair it and disconnect it so that I don't have to use it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pair with it again so that um, maybe it'll work that time. So I'm gonna put my speaker in the pairing mode. All right, now it's in pairing mode. So now I'm gonna search for devices. Now it's searching. And that, now it found it. So now I'm going to double click. Now it's searching. All right, Bluetooth advanced audio. Establishing a connection. And it says here that it's connected successfully. So now it's saying that um, Bluetooth device on B Hotel is attempting to access the Bluetooth serial port. Click yes to, to um, allow this device to access the service. 
So I'm gonna click yes. And now it wants to access another serial port. I'm gonna click yes. Now it should be connected to audio. It says that it's connected. Um, I'm just gonna test it. So this is my audio rocker. Uh, actually, hold on. So I'm not sure if you can hear that, but I think there's like a ding, which you should be able to hear. Maybe I'll increase the volume. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I really do like this Bluetooth device, even if it comes with a few caveats. But um, that's really it. Cheers.